My name is Tom Langan, and along with my lab mates, uh, Mackenzie Warrens and Grant Gorman, uh, we work in one of the coolest labs at Rice University. And the reason why it's so cool is the stuff that we make in this vacuum chamber here is thousands of times cooler than anything outside. So in my laboratory, we make and we study the coldest plasmas in the universe. And recently, we figured out how to make them a whole lot colder, which is actually achieving a goal we've been working on for about 20 years. Cold for a plasma physicist is like a candle flame, something like a thousand degrees Celsius. The plasmas that we've been making for many years here are actually uh, colder than deep space, something about one Kelvin above absolute zero. And with the new techniques we've developed, we've been able to cool them down even further to just about 50 thousandths of a degree above absolute zero, which puts us in a very, very strange regime. The most important thing that changes is that the interaction energy, the electrical forces between the particles, become much, much more dominant, much stronger than the random thermal motion and thermal energy of the particles. And that gives rise to lots of new and interesting physics, but it surprisingly makes the plasmas in my laboratory very similar to the plasmas that might be in the middle of a white dwarf star. So after photoionization, we wind up with this what we, you can basically call it a soup of ions and electrons, very similar to on the sun. We have a soup of ions that are positively charged and electrons that are negatively charged. With the addition of these laser cooling beams, we are able to cool the cloud and still have enough time to do interesting measurements of, of transport quantities like thermal conductivity, which are not, have never really before been measured in these strongly coupled systems. So hopefully through laser cooling, we'll be able to advance the field of uh, these strongly coupled plasma physics uh, in the future. These aren't inexpensive experiments. It's taken us 20 years to get here, and if I added up all the expense of, of supporting the graduate students and paying for the equipment to do this, it's easily cost us many millions of dollars to do these experiments. So, so why do we do this? Well, it does satisfy our, our innate curiosity to try to understand the world around us, and, and that's a big motivation. But basic research like this is also essential for the, the breakthroughs that, that drive tomorrow's technologies. When people were first studying the laser, they had no idea that eventually there'd be lasers at every, you know, every cash register at the, at, the, at the shopping mall. Or when somebody invented the first semiconductor, they had no idea what that computers would come out of it and change our lives. So we're doing the fundamental research that will hopefully uh, drive the revolutions of tomorrow. And that's why governments and, and companies support it and, and students and faculty like myself devote our lives to working on these kinds of things.